Jesus is the Savior of the world. You and I are not. You and I have no good works to give for anything at any time. But what Jesus has done for you has made it possible for even your lousy life and my lousy life to be used to give honor and glory. Why? Because Jesus has promised that He will live in us and that He will share Himself with others through what we allow Him to do in our lives. You realize you are needed. You are necessary. Not just at church service time. You are needed all through the week. You are part of the team that makes this church function. Some of you clean the church. Some of you play piano. Some of you make videos. Some of you share it on, online. I, I mean, some of you do all kinds of things and others just come. But even just coming is an important part of what's going on because all of that is making the body stronger. Amen. And making the witness powerful, more powerful here in this community. Look at Philippians chapter 2, verse 4. Philippians chapter 2, verse 4. Paul again. Paul understands human beings, understood us. He was constantly writing to people like you and me, struggling just to keep their heads above water, so to speak, and be faithful to the Lord Jesus. In Acts and Philippians, I'm sorry, chapter 2, verse 4, it says, Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for those of others. Verse 5, Let his mind be in you, which also was in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond service and cup servant, and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. We are called upon to be like Christ, not in our strength, but in what Christ call, is able to place in us. In verse 12, Therefore, my beloved, says Paul, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. It is Jesus that we connect with, and it is He that leads others to the foot of the cross and leads them to salvation. We're going to talk about that when we get together in April. We're going to talk about Jesus on Prophecy. That's the title of what we're going to talk about for four days that we're here together. We want to understand Jesus in the light of the Word of God and prophecy. We want to see Jesus as the Savior, but not only the Savior, the one who in the book of Revelation revealed Himself that we might know that He's coming again soon. My brothers and sisters, the disciples learn to be like Christ. In Acts chapter 2, verses 44 through 47, we're not going to turn there. You'll remember that passage, and you can make a note of it and look at it later. But the disciples, they studied together, they ate together, they prayed together, they ministered to members' needs together. They were doing more than just going to church on Sabbath. They were believers who could be found at the temple in each other's houses and administering to the people of the community. They were reaching out to others all the time and doing that. How fantastic to hear you have a health class going on here and 52 people coming out. Hallelujah. Amen. You're reaching the community. Pastor, you have a problem here. You know that. It's a good problem. But you're going to add 52 people in here somewhere. You're going to just squeeze them right in. Right? Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's bring another hundred. The Lord will help us to know what to do with that. God wants us to remember this is an emergency. Jesus is coming. People are dying physically and spiritually. We're all needed together. We need to be together when we study. We need to get together, together when we preach. And the message is shared and we worship together. We need to be together when we reach out to the community. We need to all be working together. We will be more powerful in this community for the Lord Jesus when we do it together than when we do it by ourselves. We can save as many souls as possible when we're doing it together with Jesus. When we meet together, we pray together. We study together and we work together 
You know, the world is starving to death because the farmers of the world are not doing their work and there is no food being harvested for people to eat. Some of that's true in the literal sense. There are famines going on all over. But I want you to think of a parable that I made up. So it's a parable. Did I make it up? Yes, I made it up. Okay? But it's similar to ones you've heard. And I'm going to share it with you really quickly. Just listen to the details. It's the parable of the wishful thinking farmer. The farmer buys 400 acres of land. He goes to farmer's school and gets educated on how to farm. It costs him thousands of dollars. He buys seed and tractors, a combine. It costs him hundreds of thousands of dollars. He tells all his friends about his plans, plans to be a farmer. They're excited for him. Farming season comes around and he gets together with all of his friends to encourage each other about how exciting it is going to be to have a harvest at the end of the season. They do this week after week for almost all the farming season. Finally, harvest season arrives. The farmer calls up a really good farmer who has harvested hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of food over the years and asks him to come and help with the harvest. He also invites a lot of his friends to come and watch the harvest. But when the experienced farmer shows up and the farmer and his friends go out into the field to harvest the harvest, all the experienced farmer can find are a lot of weeds and one or two little plants with some food on it. The truth is, the plants grew on their own without the help of the farmer because all the farmer did was talk about how nice it was to be a farmer and what a nice harvest he was going to have. But he never tilled the soil. He never planted any seed. He never had any plants to cultivate. He had nothing to harvest because there was nothing to harvest. This is a very true and real illustration in relationship with the church. We're not harvesting today because we're not planting. We're not putting the seed in. We're not cultivating the seed. But I say that in a general sense. I'm excited because you got 52 seeds out there that you've got planted in the ground. It doesn't mean all those seeds are going to come to fruition. But when you, when you plant those seeds, there are others that you're planting as well and that you're working to harvest. So when we come together in April for the harvest... We've still got time to do some cultivating. We've still got some time to do some seed sowing. We've still got some time to do that. But if we come together in April and we never planted and we never cultivated, I'm afraid we're not going to harvest. But I think there's going to be a great harvest here. Amen? Amen. Because you're going to be praying. You're going to be working. You're going to be sharing. You're going to be fellowshipping. You're going to be training each other. You're going to be working to see that this is the direction that God is going to take us. I would like to spend a little bit of time with the leaders. I know, are you Chuck by any chance? Yes. I know you've got something fantastic planned this afternoon and that's really, really great. It sounds fantastic. So we're going to meet together for you. Though some leaders are going to meet together for just a few minutes this afternoon. I've got a few things to share, but we want to be on time to where Chuck has that plan to get. Sounds fine, like a fantastic meeting. So God bless you there and all of you go. But we want to spend just a few minutes together talking about some of the things we can do and some of the plans that we can have. And I promise, we'll try to get you out of here in time to get to Chuck's house by 2 o'clock. Okay? We want to share a few things. God will help us. And if God uh, is with us, we cannot fail. So I want to pray, ask today, that number one, you will be praying. And that you'll have a strong prayer team praying between now and the time that we meet in April that God will bring souls to this church to fellowship together to be able to learn what God has to share and to bring about a harvest. And let's also ask for eyes to see and ears to hear and for a willing heart to respond to the call that God has that we're all part of this work. He has something He wants us to do. So I have a question for you this morning, technically this afternoon. Are you ready to be part of the body of Christ and doing this work He's given? Whatever He asks, you know, He didn't ask you to preach. Maybe He will. He didn't ask you to do some things, but He may ask you to do other things. Are you willing to do whatever He asks you between now and April to prepare for this series? Will you raise your hands to Jesus and say, Lord, I'm going to do whatever you want me to do. I'm willing to do it. That's all God asks of what He wants. Let's sing together. 
our closing hymn, number 570. Number 570, not I, but Christ is who we want to be with.